How's it going, guys? Welcome back to In the Loops with the Hoops. Uh, today, we want to do a little uh, talking about the draft. You have our reactions already on the channel earlier today. I uploaded them, our first-time reactions of the picks. Uh, now, we're, me and Calvin, we're going to go over the picks, see if we have any thoughts about them. So, I guess, uh, you want to start it off or about the first pick? Paulo Banchero, man. I mean, what mm. can I say? To me, uh, he was the best player in this draft. Uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, they should have took Chet. I mean, Paulo's a 6'10 athletic freak. I mean, the dude is probably one of the most pro-ready prospects in this draft. So, mm -hmm. for the Magic, I mean, I'm not mad at it. Honestly, though, the Magic were in a position to where they could have rolled a dice between Chet, Jabari Smith, and Paulo Benchero, and I promise you, like, they would have had a lot of people happy. They would have had a lot of people mad. Like, they are just mm -hmm. in a position where they just couldn't really win. It's not like we had a Zion in this draft or, like, an Anthony exactly. Davis. How yeah. It was, like, like a guaranteed number one pick. So, I think they did good. If I'm yeah. being fair, also, too, Paulo Bencaro was the best player in college. So, I mean, I guess it is fitting that he goes number one overall. Um, Fit-wise for the um, – Orlando Magic, I see them sliding into the four position. I feel like the Orlando Magic really needed somebody they could pass the ball to and really get them a bucket. They don't really have that right now. Like a superstar uptake, like like superstar type player on their team right now. Um, they have Franz. They have uh, they have a lot of wings. They have a lot of guards. They just needed somebody to fill out their front court probably with Mo Bamba leaving. So I think Paolo really fits really well with this team. And I think he's overall the best player, like fully, like overall playmaking, defending, and offensively. I feel like he's like the best one in the draft as an overall game. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Chet, man, how you feeling about Chet? Uh, so Chet, I already knew. That was the only one of my, like the first four of my mock draft I got right. I really – uh Side note, I thought the Kings were going to get Jaden Ivey, but it was a whole different story. Um, so with the Chet um, pick, I, I really feel like it was a good pick, a uh, very high upside. Um, I feel like that's the best team for him to go to. That would be a real team. All the teams in the top three or top four can really develop. Well, not really develop, but like give uh, the player playing time to develop. Um, but I feel like Thunder is like the best team in this top three to actually develop Chet, have him put on some weight, really develop his game overall. And make him a better player, but um, I feel like this is a really good pick. I feel like Sam Presti knew he, what he wanted when he came into the draft, and up getting what he wanted. Man, I'm a I don't know. I, I have this this weird opinion, of Chet. Watching mm -hmm. him at Gonzaga, I always thought that Drew, uh, Drew Timmy was low key better than him, just in a very like in a pure Hooper perspective. Like Drew Timmy could go get you a bucket, but you need a bucket. And yeah. watching the uh, the tournament. I mean, I just felt like Drew Timmy was making more of an impact. And, I mean, I can say the same even last year with him and Corey Kispert and um, Jalen Suggs. I still felt like Drew Timmy made more of an impact. Uh, yeah. But Chet, I mean, there's the obvious thing. If he just gains muscle, fills out his frame with some size, something, then I think he'll be fine. Um, I mean – he does have really high upside. I mean, he. I mean, I guess we can call him an athletic free just because of his size and like the handles that he has and his skill set for being so tall. But my biggest concern, of course, is how is he going to fare when he has a bunch of big bodies? Like if he has to go against Zion, I don't know if that's going to bode well. It's going to be him. crazy. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be hell for him. And then Pokusevski too. He's also a slim gym. So, I mean, you got Jonas Valanciunas and. Uh, Zion in the paint. I mean, they probably got about 300 pounds on them combined. Like, mm -hmm. uh, Chad Pope would probably only weigh 300 combined at, at most. Like, literally, bro. Like, they're like a buck 50 each. So, yeah. Uh, Chad, Chad's a, he's just an interesting prospect to me. I think out of everyone on this, like, the top three, I think. Chet can have the biggest bust potential and also have the biggest boom potential, if that makes sense. Also, I agree with that, too. Um, what I also saw Chet um, playing in college, when you go up against competition, really, he kind of, like, you know, not really rise to the pressure and stuff. Yeah. I saw this Chet was very different than the one I saw in high school because the one in high school just, like, 
get you a bucket, play defense, and like act like a star. This one right here was kind of more timid in his role, kind of was playing more like a role player in college. But, hey, I guess, I mean, you picking a role player at number two, I mean, he's 7'3", can do guard th- like guard moves and stuff like that. I mean, I like his overall game. I think it was a good draft pick by the Thunder. I do too. But like, like I said, like the one, two, and three, honestly, they all just could have picked somebody random. Yeah. Like, like each one of these guys can fit on each one of these teams. And that's, exactly. That's the funny part about it. Uh, but three with Jabari Smith, that was interesting. Jabari seems like he's going to play with a chip on his shoulder. He seems really pissed off that he didn't. Yeah. Play. But I mean, I mean, there was some, some, you know, smoke about him. Oh, he's going to go number one to the Magic. I mean, I never believe that. A lot of smoke. I saw Woj release the, the thing about uh, the draft order, which was like Jabari, Chet, and Paolo, all in that order. And it was like firm. And I'm like, oh, that's crazy. But then like right before the Vegas odds, Paolo jumped up. And then Woj was talking about how there were some rumors about Paolo jumping up. So I'm like, oof, I don't know if that might be right about what he first said, but. It wasn't, so we have Jabari going third, so crazy. I mean, he, I think, I think he, he's a he's a plug-and-play guy. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't really have too much to say about him. He's a good player. Definitely deserves to be top five for sure. Um, I think out of Paolo, Chet, and Jabari, I think he's the most you get what you, you see what you get yeah. type player, like, he he's maybe kind of like a Scotty Barnes in that perspective. Like mm-hmm. we know what he's gonna do, uh, because his skill set is so kind of refined already. And I'm not saying there's no room for improvement, but you know he you kind of know what you're gonna get with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we don't know is where we're gonna get our Keegan Murray at four, because I mean I I think the Kings as well as the um, the Knicks, are the biggest losers of this draft. Yeah. Uh, I really hope Keegan Murray makes me eat my words here, but I'm, I have no problem with Keegan Murray. Me either, me either. Pick. I just, you have Jay Ivey. Right and there. I feel like when you have a person like Jay Ivey on the board, even though he didn't want to go to the Sacramento Kings, you should have traded the pick or at least traded down to get more assets. You can't just have a player like Jay Ivey just slip right past your hands and not try to do anything with him. Because, yes, you could have got Keegan Murray, but you could have let the Pistons, like, try, try to trade up. Like, at least, like, try to tempt them or make them think that you're going to drive Jay Ivey. Like, they're just like, we're not even going to try to trade the pick. We're gonna we're just going to get our guy. Which, Keegan Murray, really good um, player. Um, he He's kind of a, your, like, your ideal role that you want. Like, I mean, he's going to – Jack of all trades kind of player, you know, not really the greatest at one single aspect of the game, but I mean, he's a really good pick. He's definitely a lottery pick. It's just he's not better than Jay Ivey. Like his upside is crazy, and it's just the fact they let him go to the Pistons when there were so many trade options from the Knicks and and all these other teams who really wanted to go back into the or like go up into the top four because of Jay Ivey. Uh, they could have just did so much more than just drafting Keegan Murray, in my opinion. And you know that's. That's the thing with the Kings, though. I mean, honestly, like, just a little side note, I do think the Pistons and definitely OKC won this draft for sure. I mean, the things definitely. that they did, the the pieces they acquired, they didn't give up a lot. Both teams didn't give up a lot for no, people didn't. who can potentially be mega stars. I mean... Um, okay, just a bunch of protected first picks, like first-round mm-hmm. protected picks, and that's... From like teams like the Bucks though, like the teams like the Bucks, they're they're not going to be in the lottery as long as Giannis is still playing basketball. They're not going to be in the lottery. No, they're not. And I mean, even even if like let's say they they were, I mean, we're talking what twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six. I mean, that's cool, but yeah, the I Knicks mean, are that bad. Pick, always twenty twenty five. I'm saying like they need to worry about now. The Knicks really shouldn't worry about twenty twenty five or whatever pick they're trying to get because there was a lot of talent. Like like for top ten, even top fifteen, a lot of talent that me and you said it last night on the stream that any one of these guys, like you could close your eyes and point to anyone who got picked in top fifteen, and that guy would be an instant starter for the Knicks. Mm-hmm. And they just decided, ah, well, we're just going to sit this out. And, I mean, if you're going to trade back, at least 
get some assets worth something. I just feel like they didn't get anything worth noting. They could have at least got that 12th pick from the Thunder. Like, yeah, I get the trading the 11th. I thought they were at least going to get the 12th pick from the Thunder. That would have made sense. But, no, they just went ahead and just didn't get any pick. And I am really hate New York. And, like, just because the mere fact that they're just banking on the fact that they're a big market in free agency, and they're going to be like, well, we have a lot of cap space, so people are going to come here. If they miss out on Jalen Brunson and Kyrie, which they, I don't think they're getting Kyrie, but they miss out on Jalen Brunson, this whole draft, the, all these trades that he just did was a waste. Was I a, mean, it's, it's a little no insane reason. that we're saying in 2022 that a team is banking completely on Jalen Brunson. Exactly. Right. They're gonna they're willing to pay him a a four year one hundred twenty five million dollar contract. Which Jalen Brunson is good, but I don't think he's that's worth just all asinine. That. Not for Jalen Brunson though. Like that's what I'm saying. And then if he just declines that, which I would decline that to be honest, it's a lot of money. But if he wants to win, he's in the best option right now with the moves that um, Dallas made in this lottery, um, and uh, the moves that they made before getting Christian Wood. The moves they might make uh, later. I think they're in a better position than the Knicks right now. And, oh, I mean, you're going to get paid, but. Hell, they went to the playoffs. You know, they went to exactly. the champions. And yep. they didn't do it's, all that bad. I mean, to be honest with you. Yeah, at least or, when you know or, when you're on the Atlas Mavericks, you're going to go to the playoffs. Like, you don't know what the, you don't know that with the Knicks. Like, you might. I mean, you might you're going to have 25 mil for you, Jalen Brunson, but then who else are you going to get? Because I'm not hearing exactly. anything else coming from the Knicks camp. Or the, we want Jalen Brunson, we want Jalen Brunson. Well, what else are you going to do with that? You're going to have Jalen Brunson running with RJ, Cam Reddish, and Julius Randle, and maybe Mitch that's Robinson? I don't think Mitch That's Robinson. what I'm saying. Mitchell Robinson's not coming back. They're probably going to have to trade Julius Randle. I don't know if they really want him anymore. And RJ Barrett is probably – they have to work on a contract extension for RJ Barrett, but there, there needs to be some talk about RJ leaving. There's all this talk about Zion leaving, but don't if RJ don't RJ get some, either. if some, if there's some, if they they don't fix anything in New York and like, and put some things around RJ, hey, I feel like Toronto might snatch him up. To be honest with you, hometown from Canada, uh, really good team. I feel like I feel like they'll be really good. I feel like he'll really like Toronto. To be honest with you, I feel like he should go to Toronto. I don't think the Knicks are really putting anything around him. In my opinion, now, I'm not saying that just because I'm a Knicks hater, because I am. But I mean, like, I just, I just don't see him as doing anything around RJ to make him want to stay. I mean, we have to be objective about the situation. I mean, the Knicks aren't doing anything. I mean, like, yeah. even if I'm the Pistons, right? I feel really good about the draft because hell, Great. I had zero like scare or worry that the Kings were going to draft my guy. I was not threatened in any way, shape, or form. I can sit pretty at five. And then I can go ahead and make a trade to to obtain more pieces, like mm -hmm. which they did, and I love what they did. And like Pistons even with the Thunder, even with the Thunder, I'm sitting pretty because oh, I gave up the 11th pick. Well, guess what? I got some Knicks picks, and I got Asamadi Bang, who's I think probably has the most interesting upside in the entire league. We can get to that mm -hmm. when we get to him. And then not only that, you keep twelve. You you get to have three picks in the lottery. I mean that's insane. And you really could have and should have only had maybe two picks mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, in the lottery. If the Knicks just decided, okay, well, we know you because they they understand that they value Asamadi Zing really high if they were going to trade uh, back in uh, to eleven to get him. So you need a up the ante a little bit, up the price a little bit. You know they're going to stretch their hand a little bit. You know Sam Presti got a whole lot of picks in his work chest. I'm sure he doesn't mind giving up an extra one. I'm sure Sam Presti was sitting on the phone like, oh, damn, we'll have to give up number 12. But then when they was like, ah, oh, nah, you can just take 11. Yeah, they're, they're, like, they're like, Jesus yeah. Christ, is that it? Sure, absolutely. Yes, we'll do that. Yeah. I just don't see banking all your talents on, a play on free agency. Just something about free agency, it is so unpredictable. The Knicks are not the only person that can offer Jalen Brunson that contract. So, I mean, I don't know why they're banking on the New York atmosphere to, to draw them in. I mean, I won't get drawn in by the New York atmosphere. That's just my personal opinion. But enough about New York uh, until we get to them in this draft. But ironically, we don't get to them. So let's go over to the <laughs> – we go over to the Pistons, and they draft Jaden Ivey, who I had on my uh, my big board 
as the best player coming out this draft. Um, similarities, people want to say Ja Moran. I, I see it, but he's more of a two guard than a primary playmaker like Ja. Um, very good. He played in Purdue, um, so he wasn't really used to his like, full capabilities. But you give him a player like Cade Cunningham so he doesn't really have to work on ball as much and let him do the things that he likes to do, like cut and, like, just drive. And, and just working off ball just relieves a lot of stress for two guards. And having one of the best playmakers, like, in Cade to help him out in his first couple years, it's it's really going to help with his development. Man, I I, I really do love Jaden Ivey. I know I was talking about Paolo Vanchero being the best player in the draft, but, I mean, he's definitely the most – Pro ready, but like mm-hmm. Jaden Ivey was definitely the guy that I won on the Pels. Like I, I could have seen the Pels trade up to four. They necessarily didn't have to do it. Uh, they could have traded into five, but I mean, I don't think the Pistons would have did that. The yeah, Pistons think, got. There were still rumors about the Knicks. I, I had to bring him back. There were still rumors like the Pistons picked that pick, and there were rumors that the Knicks were trying to trade, like still trying to get Jaden Ivey. And I'm just sitting there thinking, like the the Pistons just got their guy. There's no way they're going to trade it for future assets. Like, unless you're trading them R.J. Barrett, I highly doubt they trade you that pick right there. And I don't even know if they trade. No. I don't even know if they do trade for R.J., to be honest with you. No, I mean, it must be noted. I do like what the Pistons are doing. But I do think Definitely. that there's still some, you know, the, the back end of the roster, I'm looking at it, is not that great. I mean, yeah. you got Frank Jackson, Corey Joseph, Saban Lee. Who I, I like Saban Lee. He's, he's a nice role player. Isaiah Livers, Rodney McGruder, Kelly Olenek, who can get you a bucket. Uh, Jamarco Pickett, um, they just drafted this guy, Gabriel Fasita, and Isaiah Stewart, Big Stu. I love, I love Big Stu's game. Uh, him uh, and Jalen it's, it's, Curran, I think they need to be on the court at the same time, low-key. Maybe have Marvin Bagley come off the bench, because I don't think Marvin Bagley is going to develop, like, at all. Oh, I don't I know guess. about that. If there's something, I mean, yeah, if there's one thing I saw. But, you know, eh. I don't know. If there's one thing I saw near the end of the Pistons games, Marvin Bagley was getting bucket buckets. So right now I would think about starting Marvin Bagley. I feel like Marvin Bagley is more of a forward and beef stew. Anyway, I feel like beef stew and, and, and you know, Jalen Dern gets kind of redundant. Just due to their skill sets and beef stew not being able to shoot like great, you know, like being a real four. Um, I feel like him coming off the bench would be great though. I feel like beef stew is a starting center in the NBA, but you know, I feel like when you get in a player like Dern, you probably want him to start because of his higher upside. And I mean, but I'm okay with Bagley. Bagley would probably be okay. If they work on an extension and he has to come off the bench, I think he's okay with that. He's not in Sacramento anymore, so he's probably happy. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's ecstatic. And I mean, but if you look at it, like your starting five could potentially be uh, Kay Cunningham. Um, I think Killing Hayes is going to come off the bench from. Uh, uh, what's his name? Jay and Ivy now. You have Jay and Ivy at the two. Honestly, really, if you really want to get freaky with it, you can have K Cunningham be a three if you really want to. I wouldn't, but you can. So, you know, let's say Jay and Ivy at the two, K Cunningham at the one. You have Sadiq Bay at the three. That's really solid. Uh, Marvin Bagley at the four or Big Stu, depending on what you want to do. And then Jalen Duren starting or have Big Stu starting. Once again, that's. That's a lot. That's a, that's a playoff team off the bench. Mm-hmm. And then like Killing Hayes off the bench. Then Hamadou Diallo can come off the bench. Yeah. Carson Edwards come off the bench too. Uh, Saving Lee come off the bench. I mean, that's a solid, you know, eight, nine man a, rotation. Yeah, I think that's a play in. Due to their, uh, like their death, uh, I don't think they're going to be that good, like maybe playoff wise and also like due to experience. But they can have like a similar Cavs run like they had in the play in and stuff. But after that, I don't, I don't see anything, especially next season. But hey, the Pistons making it to the play-in with this roster—that's great to say. With their, their rebuild has been fast, quick, and they've made a bunch. They haven't really missed, to be honest, in the draft. Killing Hayes, I mean, I guess, but like, it takes a lot of time. It takes a long time for guards to develop, you know. I mean, if I'm if I'm the Pistons, I am happy. You know, mm-hmm. we understand we you know been a terrible team. For a while, um, I'll definitely say that they're in a whole lot better position than the Kings, and that really definitely. shouldn't be the case. I mean, the Kings had Tyrese Halliburton; they could have had Jay Nivey and De'Aaron Fox all on the same team, and then they do a trade with 
Pacers for Demarcus Sabonis and get rid of Tyrese Halliburton. I mean, I I didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. It's just so crazy. I think they Sabonis is like Davion. the most high Kings player. I just I don't get it. Yeah, they get Davion Mitchell, another tiny guard. When they when Franz was still on the board at that time, if they would have just if they would have got Franz, I would have been a lot happier if they traded like. So if they got Franz and then and that Sabonis trade, they trade um Fox, and then they end up getting you know Jay Nivey. You could replace Fox. That would have been really good. But they put themselves in a situation where you can't have Fox and Jay Nivey on the court together. That just you got two same like similar type players, and I don't. De'Aaron Fox is really good, but like I feel like he's kind of like you know he gets his like times where he just hogs the ball a lot, tries to take a bunch of contested shots, and he's just not you know. He's he there's a there's tiers and he's like on the lower tier of like maybe like a like a a really good player to be honest. I mean the dude used to be oh well, he's two K. I mean he's like an eighty three and two K now. I mean the dude used to be like a, like eighty eight. You know, like, yeah, he was. Hey, he was fire. He was. He was good. So, I mean, he was good so, last season. Not going. If I'm not mistaken, he was pretty well. He was good against the Pales. He was dropping forty, I mean, but he yeah. was good last season. I mean, hey, there was you know there was some talk you know if the Fox potentially coming to the Pels. I mean, Ooh, I would have loved I, to see it. But I would I don't love know, it in the long run, but I'm happy with CJ in the long run. I mean, CJ. I wish we could have both, but them. yeah, if we could have both, that would be really nice, but. I mean, look, we got Kyra, we got uh, CJ. I mean, I think we're fine. I think maybe yeah. add another point guard, maybe. Maybe just another guard in general. But hey, I mean, and we did add another guard, Dyson, you know? Especially with Dyson Daniels, you know, I think we're fine, you know? But before we get to Dyson Daniels, I guess we uh, said anything about it. You got any more thoughts about Jay and Ivy? Well, the boy's going to be great. <laughs> he got yeah. he got a lot of Detroit ties. I mean, his mom played for uh, was it the Shocks team up there in mm-hmm. Detroit. Uh, his dad played for the Lions. So I mean, hey, that's that's a full circle moment. I love to see it, and I'm gonna definitely be rooting for him up there. And if he ever wants to come to another team that starts with a P, the Pelicans are always available, and I would love to see him there one day, hopefully. Um, mm-hmm. But speaking of another P team, the Pacers, uh, Benedict Mathurin, that was my guy. Yeah, that was definitely uh, my guy too for the Pels, mm-hmm. and you know I'm gonna shout out my 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 friend Brock here. Uh, me and him, you know, we we be messing around with you know who we want on the team, and we always say we want like some manly men on the team. Like we don't want no dudes gonna dress like Kyle Kuzma. We just want some hoopers. Like like Herb Jones, the hooper. Herb Jones pregame fit via t shirt, some athletic shorts and slides. Like I want players like that. Mm-hmm. Herb don't even say much. Like he's really just a Kawhi esque type of guy. I'm like, let me get a player like that. Benedict seemed like that type of guy. His interview with Taylor Rooks, he was like, uh, you know, what can you bring in team or whatever? And he was like, I'm you you know what I can do. I'm Benedict Mathurin. Like, you know my name. I'm like, yes, I want him on my team. I like that attitude. He got that scrappy attitude and he's dunking on people. That's always fun. He's super athletic. Crazy athletic. Crazy athletic. And I mean if you add him with Zion, <laughs> like Jesus Christ. I just I just wanted it because it was going to be so hot. His ceiling, he's so, like, his athletic ability and him being able to play off ball, on ball, has really good defense. I, I didn't see a flaw in this game, to be honest with you. I think the Pacers got a good one. They got a superstar player, to be honest with you. A sleeper, not in my mistaken, opinion. Isn't he a 20-10 and 10 guy? I think he is. Uh, I don't know. That, I don't know. Well, uh, I don't know what he was exactly at Arizona. Uh he was, he was 17 and, and 5. I mean, yeah. that's close and enough. His, that's good and his shot was like, people were talking about his shot not being the most efficient, but in his first year um, playing college basketball, uh, playing college basketball, he shot 85% from like the free throw line with like five attempts. Like he was getting and to the line and then making it. 41% from three his first year also. Yeah, exactly. All so he was shooting. So I think it, it, you just got a little probably like a, a sophomore slump for his next college season. But, like, after it's that, he really didn't that. The I mean, he shot 45% from the field, 36% from three. I mean, that's still solid number, 76% from free throw. I mean, that's all fixable numbers. Like, that's fine. I'll, ta- I'll take it, especially with his upside. I, I had a video about him. I compared him a little bit to, like, you know, a little like Latrell Sprewell. A little like bigger. I ca- I compared him a little bit to like De'Aaron Fox and the fact that he was bigger 
not as fast, but better defensively. Just because of the way that they play, they play trying to get down transition. But as a shot creator, I feel like he's a he's a better shot creator, and he makes more shots than De'Aaron. Because De'Aaron will take the shots, but he won't make them. But Benedict Mathurin has a bag. He has a bag, and he can get in the bag. And once he's on, he's on. There's no way to stop. Him. Real three level scorer. Who can also play some decent defense, which is really though. I, <laughs> I mean, I. See, like, I don't even want to talk about him. It's gonna make me mad. But yeah. hey, like that, that, that was really my guy there. Honestly, uh, really, he I, was. The, I'm sorry. The Pacers, the Pacers did good with that. Um, mm-hmm. I think they're also happy because they're also one of those teams that was kind of in that sweet spot to where it's like they knew how the first three were going to go, and then four and five they knew could potentially be two two players. Um, mm-hmm. or maybe not Keegan Murray. I don't. I don't know if they expect that. I think maybe they probably expected uh, the Pistons to get Benedict, just because uh, they expect Keegan to go that early. But just the way the board fell, I mean, I just ended up perfect for um, for the Pacers, and I, I'm really interested to see what he does. Really don't. Malcolm Brogdon and Miles Turner. If if them two are on the team, come this offseason, because there's a lot of trade stuff going on with them, as like they do every year, but. We'll see. They've been in a trading block, like my friend says, since 2016. So we'll see. Um, and on to that, we have the what is it? The Blazers selecting Shaden Sharp um, from Kentucky. So with Shaden Sharp, uh, my thoughts is you pick a high upside pick. Hope he pans out. I'm not sure this is a pick you want when you're trying to compete with Dame. I feel like this is a pick you trade. Or a pick you get a player kind of like a Keegan Murray or somebody who you like can fit next to Dame. This is my. This is where I could have seen Dyson Daniels being picked because of just the you know you know what you're getting in a, like defensively and you need defense around you know like Dame and Anthony Simons and like you know um, he's a bigger guard and he can play the three. Shaden Sharp, you are in our lineup of um, Damian Lillard, Anthony Shaden Sharp, Jeremy Grant, Nurkic. You're getting cooked, to be honest with you. Those first three can't defend. I don't – Shaden Sharp has the ability to defend. I don't know if he can. Nurkic, been the lead for like 20 years, can't defend. Jeremy Grant's the only guy on that team that can defend. And from I saw from that one Nugget series um, in the bubble, Jeremy Grant can't do it all for you. So, I mean, overall, if he pans out how people think he's going to pan out, like just skill-wise, shot creation-wise, like he he's going to be like – a superstar but if he just like starts off slow i don't know how he really fits with like the blazers trying to you know really compete in the playoffs i feel like they should have traded the pick in my opinion so i feel i feel like this is the part where the knicks trade up to get a guy like the shade and sharp but you know they didn't you know the, the the blazers are an interesting team to me because they're a team that will not commit to a full rebuild like I feel like if they just would have committed to maybe a full rebuild like three years ago, I think they'll be in a lot better position today. And mm-hmm. I, I really I don't want to say it because I really do love Dame and I hope he wins something one day. But I, I just see them being a mediocre fringe eight C team for the next <laughs> like three years if they don't do anything else, do anything different. And I mean, if, if that means you have to let go of Dame, then I mean, so be it. But it seems like Dame, as much as he says he's committed to be there, I mean, if you want to do a soft rebuild, quite honestly, I would have been talking to the Wizards. I would have been like, hey, like, mm-hmm. I got this pick, the seventh pick. Y'all got the tenth. I'm not going to ask you for your tenth pick. All I'm asking for is give me Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal and and, and uh, Damian Lillard, I mean, that's... Be like a better, better version of CJ. I think I... CJ. Yeah, respectfully. It is better than CJ McCollum. I t- I'll take that if I'm the Wizards, especially if they throw in a player like Anthony Simons. I'm taking that. You get your guard, and then you get a top pick, too, where you can draft a Shaden Sharp, and then if you keep... I don't know. You probably have to give a pick back. You probably have to give your other pick back to the Blazers, but if you somehow keep that pick, too, that's crazy. Like there's just, there's a lot of things that I don't know. The Blazers drafting Shaden Sharp was definitely something that I, you know, I wasn't really looking at too much. I felt like 
honestly, they'll probably go like an AJ Griffin just for the shooting. And if they wanted to do like a soft rebuild, I mean, you got a guy who can sit there and kind of develop for a little bit. Um, but I'm happy they got him because we ended up getting Dyson Daniels. Dyson Daniels, um, this is my cue. You know, we finally made it. The highlights. So everybody you know, wants to wants to see. You know, this might be the longest portion. Um. All right, Dyson Daniels. All right, I'm going to let you start it off because, you know, I'm going to set up this, you know, these highlights in the background, you know, make it a little, little spiffy. Uh, there we go. Dyson Daniels. Now, if I'm being completely honest, uh, I was I was not really looking into Dyson Daniels all that much, and, like, that's just completely on me because I was just so focused on, like, trading back and probably like, getting Asamani Jing and maybe getting AJ Griffin if we trade back. I wouldn't have been too mad with that. Uh, I kept seeing Jeremy Sohan. I would have absolutely hated that pick. Um, Same. I kept seeing Shaden Sharp, Benning, Thurn, obviously. So it's like Dyson Daniels was kind of on the outside looking in for me. But looking into him, I do love the pick because if y'all listened to the podcast beforehand, one of the things that we talked about that the Pels needed, at least in my opinion, is playmaking and some rim protecting. I mean, Dyson Daniels is a good-sized guard mm-hmm. who – is pretty savvy, so he's not the most athletic, but he does know his way around a pick and roll. And I mm-hmm. love to see that because that tells me that if he improves his ball handling, he could be a primary ball handler, move CJ to the two, which is why I think he should be anyway, and then you can run a pick and roll with Zion. And you can get freaky with that because then Zion, once the defense crashes down on him, he can kick that bitch out to Brandon Ingram, he's in McCullough, hell, even Jonas Valanciunas. So, I've seen player comps. Uh, also, Dyson Daniels wants to defend, and he can defend positions one through four, at least one through three, in my opinion, from what I'm looking, uh, from what I see from him. And I've seen player comps like Marcus Smart, Lonzo Ball. His player comps are all over the place, I must admit, because I even see, like, Kyle Anderson. Like, um, but... I, I, I guess that, in the way they work in the pick and roll, they both have a really good floater game. And defensively, they have really good hands. That's one comparison. Defensively, I kind of see Kyle Anderson, but I see, like, Dyson Daniels is a better defender. And Dyson Daniels, his floater game is, like, spectacular. If you watch him, when he goes in the pick and roll, he really, like, brings the defense towards him with his floater. Like, he can really collapse the defense. And, like, if you have a cut in Zion, he can just throw the oop and then, you know, no, his highlights from there. And see, now, I, you know, I also see uh, Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, comp. I would absolutely love a Tyrese Halliburton on this team. And then with That's- his floater, I mean, CJ has a really nice floater. And you've seen how effective that floater was uh-huh. uh, this uh, late uh, part of the season. So he, he can also get with CJ. And even, like, with the shooting, I, you know, I see people, like my friend Brock, he was mad about the shooting. I, I think I sold him on Dyson Daniels because he's kind of – He's he's athletic enough. Let me say he's athletic enough. He can defend just about every position on the floor. He's a savvy playmaker, um, and his shot mechanic isn't disgusting. Like he has a nice shot mechanic. It's just yeah. some things that he needs to touch up. And Fred Vince is the best shooting development coach in the league, and he's going to get him right. And he also has CJ and Brandon Ingram that can show him a little thing or two. Also, so. You you have a team full of full of guys who can give each other bits and pieces of them, and mm-hmm. you know I I do, I do think that Dyson Daniels is probably the perfect fit for the Pels. Um, defend playmaking, I mean that's that's what I wanted, and I'm even seeing Lonzo Ball comparisons. I mean honestly, people get pissed off about it, but I I mean I did like Lonzo on the team. I liked what he brought. Definitely, if he just put a drove more and would have been more aggressive, I think he probably would have still been on the team. If that's a problem. Dyson Daniels does not have driving to the basket. He will drive. And that's what I want. I, like, like I said, if Lonzo drove a little more, he probably would still be on the team. He would be more effective. If Lonzo could improve his half-court playmaking, I, I, I think Dyson Daniels is a better half-court playmaker for sure. He's like, mm-hmm. definitely a lot better in the pick and roll. Like he's just a better half court playmaker than Lonzo. Because right? he has he he can shot create. 
And the thing is, the reason why Alonzo also, I wasn't too high on paying him all the money that he was, is that he makes their offense predictable. When you have a person like Dyson Daniels, like with his overall game compared with a CJ, Zion, Brandon Ingram, Valanchunas, it, it just makes their offense very unpredictable. And not you can't like single out on one player or what they can do. Because you guard Brandon Ingram because you're scared he might drop 30 without you even knowing. You're leaving Zion open at the rim to go dunk. You try to guard both of them. You have Valanchunas in the paint. He'll get the boards. He'll go up. He'll get the shots. Can't leave CJ open. He'll make open. You make open catch and shoot threes. He'll take you off the dribble, go to the rack. You have Dyson Daniels. He'll defend you on one end and then come in and dunk on you on the other. And he's he's sneaky athletic. He yeah, he's that. This makes that's, that's what I was saying. He's he's very sneaky. Like like I've seen a lot of things. Uh, like Arthur Bomber was like, oh, he's not really that athletic. Well, watching him, he's pretty athletic. I've seen him get blocks on like threes and I fours. Think, like he's athletic. I, not going to lie, I think, I don't know, I think he went to the combine or it was one thing and they did like the little sprints drill. It was the, it was be- the lateral shuttles and stuff. He had yeah. an excellent lateral shuttle I think shuttle he time. did better than Aaron Holiday, who was like the best one that like mm-hmm. that's ever done it. I think he did better than Aaron Holiday. So I think he's athletic. Like he's definitely athletic. I just don't think he's like bouncy. Like he's not, he's not going, he probably has the vert that you need. But, you know, Westbrook only has like a 38 inch vert. That's not a lot compared to some people. In the NBA, but he's really bouncy and twitchy. He'll go up there like he has a lot of athleticism where he can just go up and bounce. Dyson Daniels doesn't really have that. He plays slower than what he really is. But and that's what I like because here's a, a a little thing for all the people who are basketball connoisseurs. They'll know what I'm talking about for sure. There's a there's a very underrated skill and players like Chris Paul have it. Players like Chris Paul, they're not the most athletic, like especially now because Paul's not you know Hornet CP3. D. Wade has it because he wasn't the absolute most athletic, especially later in his career, like when he got with LeBron. These type of guys know how to manipulate defenses by changing speeds, by changing uh, angles, angles and, and speed and stuff like that. It's real sneaky and deceptive, and it's so, so, so subtle, but it makes the largest difference. Like, that is the difference between how CP3 can get open on a very athletic guy by doing minimal head movements or not even moving fast, not not doing a uh, an and one mixtape like Kyrie does or like what Steph Curry does, like those guys know how to manipulate defenses, and I can see Dyson Daniels manipulating defense, especially with his floater. I mean, that floater is going to be an absolutely mm-hmm. dangerous thing, and I think that alone is like worth drafting him. And I even go read this part of an article. Uh, it's it talking about his weakness uh, with shooting. Uh, Dyson Daniels himself said, that's my swing skill, being able to shoot the basketball. I think my last nine games, I shot at 45%. So I think it's just me getting in the gym and getting reps up. I've always had the mechanics. It's just adjusting to the ball, adjusting to the NBA three-point line. But once I get the hang of that, the stroke was feeling really good in the end. So I was and go- that's perfect. Mm-hmm. So is the – I don't know. Do you know this? Is the G League three-point line like the same as the NBA three-point line, or is it like close to the basket like college? Because if it's the same I like a normal it, I NBA... I think it would be the same as, it, as the NBA. Because if it is, that's testament to his three-point like shot. Even if it's not the best, what is it, like 29 or something like that? Even if it's not the best, playing on like an extended three range where some people in college are playing on, you know, shorter threes. I believe if he went to college, he'd probably be even in like a top five pick, to be honest with you. And I think... You know, you just got to think about it, like, he coming out of high school. When you went from high school three-point line to NBA three-point line, it's a huge difference. It makes a difference. And then and coming then, from overseas, talking too. talking about yeah. adjusting to the ball, like, mm-hmm. ball size is different. Like, these are little things that he had to get through. And I think what we're going to see, especially if he plays in the summer league, we're going to see – Slow development. I, I don't know, honestly, honestly, I think he's going to not have that rookie curve like what we'll see. I think Jay Ivey, well, my prediction for him, he's probably going to be bad probably for the first month, maybe two, until he gets used to it. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to see that with Dyson Daniels. I think Dyson Daniels is going to just come straight out of here. I mean, we hey, we even seen it with Trey Murphy. Like, we've seen him, like, mm-hmm. struggle until he got used to it late in the season. And Yeah, that's the I one think, thing I like about G League Ignite. 
Yeah. But, I mean, Do you think Ignite, did, did, like, all their players, they don't really have all, like, you know, the the rookie curves, like you're saying, like, where they got to get adjusted to the NBA because they already know the flow offense. They know what to do. They know how to cut. They know how to, they have NBA coaches teaching in a G League Ignite, so they're really accustomed to how to play an NBA offense. So, I mean, that's that's one thing I also like about Dyson Daniels, him coming from, you know, a really good uh, tenure development system. Uh, but also, um, I heard a lot of good things about him coming out the uh, Pelicans. I heard also heard a lot of things about uh, Usman Diang. Um, but, you know, can't have them all. Can't have them but all. But I'm just happy we have Dyson Daniels right now. I mean, I'd rather have him. I'd rather have, a you know, a first-round pick, unlike some teams, you know. I'd be grateful. <laughs> Definitely grateful. Shout out to the Lakers. The Lakers really did us nice with this slow cooking marinating pick. Mm-hmm. Definitely a fan of that. Yeah, I can't uh, even be mad at the Lakers because even the Lakers were smart enough to know they needed a pick this year. So, yeah. which I think they they still chose the wrong dude. I mean. Yeah, there, there's so much. T- I think Jaden Hardy. I understand what they were going for, but like the up, not this upside isn't even that. You know, like, his upside is just not there. I would have rather. Taking a flyer out on a guy with super high potential like a Jaden Hardy. Hell, exactly. you can even draft the EJ Liddell like we did, you know, smart team. Uh, a guy exactly. who is a 2010 guy. <laughs> I mean, that guy is, I think, what, he had the highest vert in the combine this it, year? It's just disgusting how they let that man slip all the way to the 40s. They just they just want the pills to, like, draft. Like, I don't even think we're drafting one. We're just picking – the players that should have been picked already. We're just picking the top 10 talent. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if you're in 2K and you're doing a draft and, you know, you, you sort it by, like, the ranking. Hey, if I'm pick 40 and I see a guy with a ranking of, like, top 15, I'm picking him. I don't At care. that point, when you're in a second round, you're just picking for the best overall talent. The Mavs mm-hmm. knew it. Pelicans knew it. Lakers didn't know it. Lakers, I don't know. If you're getting a player that you want – Instant fit next to like well, if you're getting a player like him, you want to develop him, but you want him to play minutes. But the Lakers aren't going to play him minutes. They're going to put him in the G League and like let him let him simmer until he goes to another team and becomes an All Star. But when you get players like this, either you should go for high upside and have him develop, or get a role player who can play right now or like a really good three point shooter. But they're betting on his shot. His shot is good, but like his percentages are bad. But his shot is good, though. So they're just betting that it transfers over to the NBA, which I don't know if it would. We'll, we'll find out how good he is once he leaves the Lakers. So that's all I can say about that. <laughs> his inevitable departure from Los Angeles. Uh-huh. All right. Well, after after um, Dyson Daniels, you know, you know, Pale's legend already, we have the Spurs drafting Jeremy Sochan. Or Sohan, however you say it, from Baylor, who I originally thought was going to be a pail. Um, so I'm kind of happy he is in the pail, respectfully, though. He seems like a really great guy. Just something we don't need as a guy who just doesn't have a shot. Yeah. He yeah. he has – it's one thing to, to have a guy who can't shoot but has decent enough mechanics versus a guy who can't shoot and has no mechanics. I honestly think the Spurs drafted Michael Kidd Gilchrist here. Um, all defense, that's really all this dude is. And I'm not even really going to say he's super amazing on defense because he does get into foul trouble. And it just seems like he's low-key, though, just, just low-key, low-key kind of clumsy on the defensive end of, ball, uh, defensive end of the game. Um, this is a very Greg Popovich pick. It just mm-hmm. is. He's a guy who isn't flashy at all. Uh, other than his hair color. Uh, he's a guy who loves defense. Every one of these Spurs picks in this draft has been guys who can play defense. And as we all know, everybody on the Spurs can play defense, or at least most of them can. So mm-hmm. he fits the bill of defense, defense, defense that Greg Popovich loves to have. But I, I had a lot of concerns with him. His player comps being Ben Simmons, uh, Draymond Green. Quite honestly, I think if you're comparing to Draymond Green at this point, that's an insult. Uh, I don't want Draymond Green anywhere near any of my teams. The dude is yeah. better at making podcasts than basketball at this point. Um, 
he's not the defensive player of the year 2015, Draymond. He's just not. He hasn't been for like three, four years now. And I don't uh, even think Jeremy Sohan, Sohan is even as good playmaker as current day Draymond Green right now. To be honest yeah, with no, you. Yeah, no, I don't either. And that's, it's not even saying a lot because I don't even think that Draymond Green's playmaking now is as good as it once was. And even with Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons now, Ben Simmons is just a player who's never improved. I mean, let's just be honest. He's been in the league mm-hmm. team and has not improved at all. He was just a really good pro-ready guy who is good enough to give you 20, but that's all he's going to be. He's not – he's going to be that guy who's going to be borderline all-star, maybe all-star for the rest of his career unless he decides to grow up and get a shot, which I don't think he yeah. wants to do. And – as far okay. as having Ben Simmons comp, I mean, I just, I mean, I don't know if you want that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want that because I don't even see it defensively, and yeah, I don't even see it defensively and offensively. As much as we talk bad about Ben Simmons offensively, I don't know. Before that Hawks playoffs, he was really he 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 can drive. He'll go to the paint. He'll drive. Like he had no problem with going to the basket, being aggressive. Unless until he got to the Hawks series, then he just you know, lost his aggressiveness. But the thing about Jeremy Sochan is that, first off, he's not a good perimeter defender like Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is, like, a really good perimeter defender. What, probably, like, all NBA defense, all DPO, defensive player of the year type, you know, perimeter defender. Interior defender, pretty decent, too. But Jeremy, I don't see him, like, as good as Ben Simmons on as defensively. I also don't see him, like, as, like, energetic on the offensive side of the ball as Ben Simmons, you know, before the Atlanta Hawks series. Just saying a lot. <laughs> I mean, That's what I'm saying. I don't see, like, on lot. offense, when I watch him play, he's very passive. And I know he wasn't really used as the number one option because they had, what, Kendall Brown on their team. But still, I'd love to see him, like, you know, try more on offense. I just feel like he doesn't try as much. Defensively, just because they're not as good as Ben Simmons doesn't mean anything because Ben Simmons is, like, one of the best defenders in the NBA when he plays. He'll, he's definitely a great defender, but he's just not as good as Ben Simmons, not as athletic, not as long. Um, and then aggressively, I, I feel like the Ben Simmons comp, I I don't really get it, especially playmaking-wise because Ben Simmons is a good playmaker. I feel like there's, there's, there's throwing that out because people see Ben Simmons right now as, you know, a guy who can't – all they see him as a guy who can't shoot, defend, and um, – can do a little bit of playmaking. If you think that about Ben Simmons, then yeah, he's just like Jeremy Sochan. But if you really look into Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons is much more of a complete player than Jeremy Sochan. This is more of a, we're going to try to develop him. We give him a shot. We'll see what we get there from him. But they got to give him the shot first. And I just, even with the Ben Simmons first, I mean, I don't, I, I just don't like it. Because you can tell me right now that Ben Simmons wants to play for the Pelicans, and if I'm the Pelicans, I'm hanging up the phone. Like, I don't care. Because we have a very timid Ben Simmons right now who I, I do believe the mental stuff that I'm hearing, I, I just – I don't think he's mentally there anymore. I Because I, seeing him just so scared to drive, because he knows if he gets fouled, he's not making the free throws. It's in his head that he's not making the free throws. So he doesn't want to drive. It's kind of like what Lonzo was. Doesn't want to drive because he's not making the free throws. He's going to make a, a pass that he shouldn't make to a guy who's contested when he's open. And he's of all people. And then when it, when it comes down to when you need a bucket and you, you, you really can't have him in the game in late situations yeah. because the defense is not going to respect him. And it, it makes it even worse when he gets the ball, no one, everyone's 15 feet away from him on all sides. And he doesn't take the shot. He doesn't even try. I mean, hell, if I'm in the NBA, I don't care if I'm shooting 2%. If you're giving me that much space, I'm going to take that damn shot mm-hmm. because there's a chance that it might go in. I mean, I'm an NBA player after all. And a guard open, that guy, open, too. That yeah. open. Like, I'm going to at least take it, and he's just not doing it. He's mm-hmm. such a non-existent factor on the offense now. I don't – I think that's where they mean – I think they mean, like, a now type of Ben Simmons. Yeah. And, we're not, and even with back, uh, his back injury, I don't – we might not ever see all NBA type defense from Ben Simmons on the perimeter defense anymore. And there's also another thing that I saw with Jeremy that concerned me because they were talking about he can, he has the potential to excel as an excellent two way player. And they were calling Ben Simmons and Draymond Green two way players. And that's just completely wrong because mm. to be a two way player, you have to have an offensive game. Yeah. And none of them do. 
You can't Draymond for a Jeremy's season. Jeremy's going to be a two-way player, and he just can't score. That's just not happening. I don't see it. Yeah, I really don't see it scoring-wise. Defensively, I see it, but if, if if there's one team to do it, I'd say the Spurs could do it. If they if there's one team that can get this man a shot, the Spurs could. I'd say we could too, but I don't we know. If, too. I'm not spending. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not wasting time. time. Yeah. Yeah, that's too much time. That's too much time. time. And then, and it, it'll take them like three years. We don't have three years to try to, you know, develop some lot some lottery pick that we have right now. We need a plug and play player. But for um, the uh, the Spurs who are just beginning their rebuild, that's it's not a bad pick. It's just I. That's a C minus. You could have traded down to like the Thunder's pick or right before the Hornets pick because I don't think anyone's picking Jeremy Soji. I don't think, to be honest with you, I'm being fair. I don't think anyone's picking him until like the Hawks. They maybe pick him, but not even that because maybe they want a shooting like where they got AJ Griffin because of the shot. So, anyways, C C minus pick for the Spurs. I think they're losers in that one. Not gonna lie. C-minus. Overall draft, I feel like they did good. We'll see, like, in the next draft who they pick. I feel like I, I really like Malachi Brandon. I feel like they did good on their next picks. Fit-wise, I don't know, but I just feel like they got the best talent on there. But after that, we have um, Jer- Johnny Davis uh, goes to the Wizards from Wisconsin. I see this as, like, a Bradley Bill replacement, if I'm being honest with you. I feel like Bradley Bill replacement. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like this is their uh, replacement for Bradley Bill. I feel like they know something we don't. Bradley Bill came out saying he wants to win. Um, so I feel like this is time to win. They got their uh, two guard for the future, Johnny Davis. He can, he's a scorer, and he makes really bomb commercials with a, a chalupa in his hand. So at least we know he's um, advertiser friendly. So I mean, I really like this pick for them. If they're really gonna get rid of Bradley Bill, I mean, they get one of the best scorers in the draft. So that's all. I mean, I really, I can't really break down Johnny Davis's game. I haven't watched too. I mean, he's. Yeah, a, I, I've I have, watched some of his game. Really I haven't watched too too much of it though. Yeah, I just know he's really he's a good scorer. Definitely pick wise, I feel like they got who they wanted at that part. Um, I guess is I guess that's everything we got to say about Johnny Davis. Um, good pick. I rated a a, a name. Uh, we got the Knicks drafting Usman. F, they get an F F. F for the drafting Knicks. Usman. Let, let, let me start. Drafting Usman Dieng. I already give that an A plus. Then trading him for OKC yeah. for a future pick and not even getting the next pick, the second pick. So I guess we'll just go ahead and talk about the OKC and because we already bashed the Knicks earlier. I really don't want to talk about this poverty franchise. It's, it's crazy. No, sorry to Knicks fans, but it, it's, it's 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 sad. So let's just talk about OKC. They get Usman Dieng and they get Jalen Williams who. Two players I think have one of the highest upsides in the lottery. Usman Dieng, you see a 6'10 forward be able to handle the ball. In certain aspects, I see him like a, I saw him better than Dyson Daniels, not playmaking it defensively, but like him able to get his own shot. I've seen players' comparisons. I know we both seen player comparisons of Paul George. Had me kind of hyped because I'm like, ooh, Pelicans are really excited for his workout. I'm like, oh, okay, we might get him. I'm like, we didn't, and I'm like, well, at least I'm glad he go into a team like OKC, which does have a lot of players, especially um, in the front court now and in their back court. So I don't know how the minutes are going to be rearranged, but they do have a G League team, so they're going to get minutes somewhere. And if I can go ahead and touch on Jalen Williams, um, man, I feel like he's going to be that one guy that we look at and we're going to be like, dang, why was he not drafted in the top three? I feel like Jalen Williams has that kind of upside. I feel like he has – look he, being able to abuse the pick and roll like he does. Maybe Harden. Harden. That's exactly what I'm saying. He really reminds me of James Harden. And I think James Harden was drafted around this area. I think it was maybe eight or like 13. Something. It was something around that area. I know it was lottery. But he reminds me a lot of James Harden. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got for that. Uh, I think as far as – I think you did good on the on uh, Williams there. Um I, I ain't gonna say too much because I think he's the same. Baby Harden is enough for that. Um, exactly. As far I as see the upside. Game, I think if there was any player in the draft who will have a Giannis type career arc, it would be James. It just will. Uh, dang, I, <laughs> I I really I really did want us to draft him. Uh, I don't really know how he would fit here, 
But I, me either. I think he could have replaced Willie. I mean, Willie's here for buys though. But I mean, he he played he played a lot of forward. I mean, it's not out of the blue for him to say, you know what? We keep CJ at the point guard and we run him at the two. We have a really tall lineup, but you know, it happens. I mean, he's a, he's really good for freaky lineups. He he is, and I mean, like I said, I think he could potentially end up like a Giannis type guy because Giannis was a, Giannis wasn't that big. When yeah, he, when he got drafted, and he, what Giannis Giannis was looked drafted at as what thirteen? Uh huh, around that area. Yeah. Like he, I, I think we we might be looking back and looking at potentially like a like a KD Giannis type whatever, mm-hmm. like just a a superstar, a really I, tall I guy who can get to the star. shot. You can't go wrong with really tall guys who can. Like really shot crate. You don't you don't get a Paul George every you know every day. And Those players so are really rare. Smooth. So damn smooth. Mm-hmm. He's buttery to watch. Like mm-hmm. when you watch him, that's crazy. That's one thing about Paul George. He's a he's a whole six nine, maybe six ten, and he has like some of the best handles in the NBA. If not, he, he's top five handles in the NBA right now. That's yeah. really crazy to think about. And I mean, mm-hmm. another guy. That I think is going to be really good. Uh, Jalen Duran uh, traded to Detroit. Uh, if I was the Hornets, I mean, it's like what you said last night. I mean, drafting Mark Williams. I mean, I'm also touching him a little bit. He adds a center. He's a center who plays defense, and that's that's basically what the Hornets need. I'm I guess say much yeah. about that. He's what they needed. So good job for the Hornets. Very uh, Jalen Duran. I would prefer. Ooh, I definitely. Jalen Duran, his body, uh, body type. If you see him. He's built like a rookie Dwight Howard, maybe even like like mid twenties Dwight Howard. He is built. His his ability, like his upside is crazy. And him going to a team like the Pistons, who he'll get minutes for that center spot. Um, hey, it's 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 crazy. I would have rather the Hornets. I feel like it made a lot of sense for the Hornets, but I guess the Hornets want a a more you know defensive mind defensive minded. I see Jalen Dern like. I understand Mark Williams. You know, he's taller, longer wingspan, you know, not as bad. Like, if you're just looking for a lob threat, I feel like, you know, Jalen Duren would have been, you know, better dunks. But Mark Williams probably is a better defender right now. He's more of a ready player right now than Jalen Duren, if I'm being honest with you. But Jalen yeah, Duren's upside is crazy. I mean, they're, I, I mean, LaMelo would probably be better with Jalen Duren, but I, I mean, I think they just want a guy who's not going to get in the way of, Lamelo too much for um, his offensive game. Well, I mean, I'm I'm on the side. There's no such thing as having too much offense. There just isn't. Like I, I don't think Jalen Duren takes the ball out of people's hands too much. Mark Williams definitely not. I feel like Mark Will- Mark Williams isn't a bad pick. It's just Jalen Duren's upside is so much better. I would, if Mark Williams went to Detroit, I'll still be happy for Detroit. I feel like that's really good. But just the fact that they got Jalen Duren to another, like, person I saw going in a top eight, top nine. Some saying the Spurs is going to get him the best center in his draft class. Um, well, third best center in his draft class. But, like, it's crazy that he um, came all the way down to 13 and then got traded to Detroit in a three-team wow. deal that had every team happy. Uh, I will say with Mark Williams, though, um, if he can carve out like an Andre Drummond type role, like he just has to improve his rebounding a lot. Uh, him just rebounding, getting boards and playing paint D, I mean, I'm, you got to be happy about that. Cause All they baby. needed was a seven foot center, to be honest with you. They could have picked uh, Walker Kessler and still come out as winners, to be honest with you. Because that's all they really needed. Somebody better than the center they already have, which I, what was it? Um, is it still Cody Zeller or is it, um, what's his face? I, I always get, yeah, I always get Cody Zeller and, uh, dang it, what's his name? Oh my God, I don't want to be like the other white guy center because people might, might think I'm talking about Daniel Tice, <laughs> but no. Miles Plumlee. Miles Plumlee, yeah, I think Miles Plumlee on there. He's good, but he's not, you know. Mark Williams right now. He's gonna he's gonna make him a much better team, especially defensively. And he's he's tall. He he's he's seven two with a with a seven six nine, wingspan. Nine foot nine standing reach. That's crazy. 
Right. You're almost stay on his tippy toe. And the thing is, when you get players that tall, you'd be like, oh, they're not athletic. They're not built. He's built and he's athletic. So I don't see too many problems, like, happening, like, because he's, like, really tall but overly skinny. I feel like both these two centers, Jalen Duran and Mark Williams, have NBA-ready bodies, and they're ready to play in the NBA. They could take a shoulder thing to Zion and only get pushed back, you know, five meters. Instead of Chad, who's going to get pushed back into, you know, California. So it's going to be crazy. Now, moving on to Ochai Agbaji. I think I said that right. Somewhat. Uh, It sounds good to me. (laughs) I ain't going to go too much into it. I mean, he's the prototypical guy. I mean, he has good physicals. He's a really good spot-up shooter. I mean... That's cool. Just Cavs. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, I probably if I was a Cavs, Loki probably would have went Tari Eason, but yeah, I'd, to be honest. If with you're you. looking for scoring, at least I mean, they're looking for a higher team. upside. Let's see, well, Oshie I, think I think has the best floor in the league in the draft right now. I feel like he's gonna go on the Cavs and be like a ready player. Like he's gonna probably be the same that he was in college, but I feel like. His ceiling is not going to be that much higher. He'll probably get better for three more seasons and probably cap cap out as, like, maybe a better camera paint, to be honest with you. No, I mean, I'm going to hurry up and jump to, to the Rockets here for Tari Eason. Tari Eason, I can see his career going one of two ways, and it's all going to be dependent on if he gets the playing time. And I, I think, honestly, you would probably have to think about trading – KPJ, just because KPJ is a very ISO heavy guy. Ball dominant. I feel like that's why they got their next guy. Um, what was it? Um, guard. Oh my gosh! I have, after that, you know, like four hour long stream. I'm I'm cooked. I'm literally <laughs> cooked. They got what's his face? What's his face? Ty Ty Washington. They have Ty Ty Washington. I feel like that's probably their backup for KPJ, which I love KPJ as a player, but he's just not a point guard to be. He's just not really a point he's guard. Not the guy who, if you draft Tari Eason, like I said, if I'm gonna say this, if if Tari Eason gets the playing time and he gets his the correct system, I think he's gonna have a really great career mm-hmm. and gonna be probably one of the best scorers in the league. Uh, he can easily get himself. Uh, a Duncan Robinson type contract, just low key, low key. Uh, or I can see him going the Cam Reddish career route. A guy who has so much offensive potential, but the team just doesn't give him the chance and doesn't uh, uh, allow him to develop. And then he's he's just going to be stagnant for his first. His very pivotal like first three years of his career. I mean, those first three years of your career can, in fact, shape the rest of your career. I mean, if you're stagnant in one place and then you get traded somewhere else and then they don't play you, I mean, you're you're probably at that point going to just be a role player. Like, that's just being honest. And yeah, I think Tari Eason has the potential to be more than a role player. Yeah, and, you know, I think, like, with Cam Reddish, it's unfortunate that's happening to him. Uh, I really don't know a team that he can really go to that's like really gonna play him like that. Probably just a rebuilding team. I don't know. I think he can Cam play. Yeah, I mean, I think he can play anywhere. I, don't know. I feel like he kind of misses more. I feel like yeah, it's like he had, his, there's his so many stable. teams you could have used him. Like I was, I was an advocate for trading Lonzo Ball and getting like him like last season because we need a shooting and he can also defend. Last season, he probably would have built up a role on the team and it probably would have been, like, you know, great by now because he would have been actually get a chance to develop. But being on, a, being on you know, the, the, no, being on the um, Hawks, they don't give you any uh, playing time. And going to the Knicks and being open, really he should be starting for the Knicks, if I'm honest, and just still not getting playing time because the Tibbs don't like to play newer players, younger players. I don't know. I feel like he's being forced to start freaking um, – RJ, I feel like he wouldn't even want to start RJ. Probably just run Kimba and Derrick Rose if he could. If it was yeah. 2012, this would be amazing, but it's not. That would be pretty fine. So, Cardiac Kimba. But that, that's my feelings on Tari Eason. Uh, for AJ Griffin, I'll say amazing shooter. I think he's, he's, he's going to be 
a guy you want to have in the playoffs, especially if you're the Hawks, because uh, mm-hmm. we've seen a lot of replacement Cam Reddish. Yeah, replacement Cam Reddish, and I and I think the the one of the biggest problems for the Hawks was finding a guy who can score next to Trey Young. Because as funny as it is seeing Trey Young absolutely obliterate Knicks and their fans, he does need a little bit more help. Even though that team is filled with a lot of guys who can shoot or should I be able to I have no shoot. idea how they're not as good. They should have just kept the team the same like they did, and they somehow got worse, which was crazy. Because they somehow were – Somehow got worse. I don't know. It's, that, team, that team on paper, to me, was saying, I can see them going to the Eastern Conference Finals if everything goes right. And it just just didn't happen. They so, gave their magic dust to the Celtics, and they went on a run. So I mean, it's a good pick for the Hawks. I'm not mad at it. Um, got anything to say about AJ Griffin? Um, another candidate to go um, earlier to like San Antonio. I would have kind of rather him than Jeremy Sochan. Um, people have a lot of worries about the injuries. Um, I don't really know too much about them. People are talking about him as an athlete. I mean, as long as you can shoot in the NBA and the physicals is him, you don't need to be a good athlete, to be honest with you. You can shoot 42% from threes and you know how to and you know how to be a like a, a role player, like be in your role. That's all you need. And yeah, I feel Duncan like Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson. Exactly. That's a perfect example. I feel like even if his defense never pans out, but his shot, which we already know is good, can at least be like 40%. I mean, that's 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 all that's that's all you need. And I feel like a team like the Spurs could have really used that, especially coming. I feel like a team like oh my gosh, I hate to mention. I feel like the team like the Knicks could have really used that. Like they could have used somebody who can shoot, especially when you have RJ on the team, somebody who needs shooting around him, which they have done a horrible job rebuilding around RJ or building around RJ. I mean, hey, JJ Redick built out a long career just being a shooter. Exactly. Uh, with no defense. Dirk, Dirk didn't defend. I mean, he's, got, he's Hall of Famer. So, I mean, I think AJ will have shots. This is a solid career. I think, mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but I mean, I think he will probably top out more as a high-end role player. Like, I don't I don't see him ever, like, going to an all-star game or any of that. Like, he, he's going to he have a nice... Maybe a three-point contest. Yeah, a three-point contest for sure. I mean, he's going to have a really niche role in the NBA, and he's going to be one of those players that Kind of like a P.J. Tucker, I guess, how every team would love to have a P.J. Tucker. He's going to be one of those guys that's just going to be a high-end role player that really any team would love to have. So that's A.J. Griffith, yeah. y'all. Um, 18. Now, this is where it started to get a little scary for me and my knowledge. I Lonzo know Ball replacement right there. <laughs> I, I could definitely see that. Um, like I said, like, really after 18, it really starts getting kind of sus for me in the draft with my draft knowledge because uh, I didn't hear a lot out of him. Um, I was surprised. Yeah, I was it, same here. I I mean, you had Ty Ty on the board. I mean, if you want to replace Lonzo, Ty Ty is there. I think he's going to be good. Um, if you want a big, if you want to, um, uh, you want a bigger guy, uh, Kof, 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 Kofi Kofi Coburn. <laughs> Coburn. I don't was still on the board. Um, who else was it? Um Christian Coloco was still on the board. Walker Kessler still on the board. If you wanted a big, because you don't believe in Val not Valentinus, uh, but Vucevic. I don't know what they I mean, I get what they're going for. Um Daniel Terry. Who not a guy I saw going in this range, to be honest with you, in my mock draft. So, I mean, I really don't know. I really had him drafting, like, at least I had him, I had him drafting. Uh, uh, I don't know, to be honest, on top of my head. I just don't. I, I know I didn't have him drafting him, to be honest with you. I mean, he didn't. I mean, he didn't. He didn't go in the uh, top 20, I don't think. I mean, I'm looking at. Uh, NBA's prospect list for him. It seems like the scouts for the NBA don't know either because they spent a big versatile guard who may not score prolifically, but competes enthusiastically on both ends and otherwise checks a lot of boxes with impressive versatility. Just seems like he's just a guy who just, who might be just good at everything, but he won't be a master at anything. Like, I mean, just, I mean, if that's what you're getting a uh, backup. 
But I just feel like they have so many guards. They have Kobe White. They have um uh AU uh IU Desomo. IU Desomo. Yeah, yeah, who's really good. Um, they have Lonzo if he comes back. They have Zach Alex Levine. Oh, Alex uh, Caruso. Uh, Demar. Demar Dave basically Barth. a guard. Exactly. Man, Vucevic really plays like a guard too because I mean, uh, so, <laughs> so I'm like. I really don't know. I really don't. Uh, this is time for that Kobe trade we've been waiting for because I don't see where he fits. I don't know if the team wants him after getting like a new front office. I don't think they really believe in Kobe yeah, like I, that. I think I think they did Kobe White so dirty. I mean, king of the fourth quarter, uh, YouTuber, uh, biggest Bulls fan I know. I remember when they drafted Kobe White. He was a little surprised by it too. Seems like the Bulls are always making some surprise picks all the time, but. I, he even said like guards are like the longest position to develop in the league and Kobe White was already undersized as it is so he had just that much more to of a hill to climb and I just really think they just gave up on my boy he was playing in the G League really for did. a little bit like they, I just, he's they gonna really, have a window Carter yeah. they go ahead and send him to Orlando have like the little bull boys or something like that and they gonna see what they did wrong because they gave up on window Carter too soon man's like prime Al Horford right now window Carter is just so good and, um, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know much about him. I don't know much about the pick. Uh, I don't even know much about the next pick either, Jake Ooh, I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, know anything. I that that it, surpasses I, I, that one. Like, I don't know yeah. anything about All right, him. What did we see about? We saw something like on. Oh, no, I think he was a higher high, was he high motor. motor. I mean, yeah, he, he, he had a yeah, high motor. I don't even think Timberwolves. Hey. I mean, our Memphis fans even know why they picked him. To be, I, I really don't want to talk. I don't know because I'd have to look it up because I don't want to talk about a pick I don't know about. And we have Malachi Burnham right now, like Burnham, and I know about him. And I that's the reason why the Spurs get like you know a B in my book because Jeremy Sochan gets you like a C plus, but drafting Malachi, who I don't know how he fits on the team with full of guards like Primo, bunch of bunch of two guards too. But I just love his potential. You know, really likes to score in the mid range. Um, pretty much a scorer who can also defend, just like their other pick that they have. So I feel like you can't go wrong with a bunch of uh, players who like to score, no matter where they score in the mid-range or not. He just doesn't like to shoot threes, I don't think. I think that's one thing about him, he just doesn't like to shoot threes. But he's a really uh, good mid-range shooter. Well, he's, a, he's a fluid uh, three-level scorer, which just so happens to be the build of most of my my main 2K uh, my career players and park players, they're usually three way, three level scorers. Yeah, they always um, have me playing paint beast. So when we go to Rex, so you know, I don't have that luxury. I'm, I'm the three level scorer. So I'm the Malachi Branham of the team. Uh, so I like Malachi. Um, but just doubling back real quick on the Memphis pick, I will say my roommate is a Memphis fan, and even he doesn't know what the hell. They got going on. But considering that that team is just filled with a lot of guys who are virtually unknown or would be unknown in the draft. Yeah, he's going to be something. And they're good. I I, I mean, I hate to say I do trust what Memphis is doing. Uh, They they probably drafted Michael Jordan, for all I know. White Michael Jordan. So, that's cool. Um, The Nuggets, they get Christian Braun. Or Christian Brown. That's how it's apparently pronounced. That's Um, a good pick. Really want to get uh, Jokic though, but you know, just for the names, but yeah, you know, for so the but missed opportunity. Wise, I don't see it. Is this potentially an insurance policy for Jamal Murray? Jamal Murray. Uh, I mean, if it is one, it's kind of a you know the lowest insurance policy you can get <laughs> compared <laughs> to what Jamal Murray is. Uh, you know, if he plays, but. Yeah, I, I kind of see it right now, but I feel like I feel like oof, it depends. He came coming back from an ACL injury. I'm more worried about, to be honest with you, I'm more worried about um, MPJ because his back is a constant issue that has like hindered him ever since the pre-draft process. So I'm more worried about him, which is probably another reason why maybe Nikola Jokic would have been, you know, on my board higher than Daniel Terry. But Daniel Terry is also pretty good too. I mean, I think he played maybe with. Right uh, there. Christian Brown's the, the MPJ insurance policy. That's what he is. He ain't just Jamal Murray's insurance policy. He's the MPJ insurance policy, for sure. I don't yeah. think MPJ's on the Nuggets after this season. Just, oh, you, oh, ooh, hot take. If I had, like, a button that has, like, a, you know, ooh, 
Ooh, Sal, I'd probably <laughs> question right now, but ooh, why do you say that? You think they trade him like because of the contract? I, they I gave him that think, ridiculous contract. I, I just think at this point they're winning. They're winning so well without him. I mean, if you can get him to full strength and like to the potential of MPJ that we all know that he should have, you have an absolute dub. You might end up being the one seed on some shit. But uh, his back, I, I, I think they just kind of start to cut their ties a little bit and they say, all right, let's get something while his iron may still be hot. Let's get something before the whole league realizes, okay, he's a bust, his back, he's going to be injury prone. Like, get well, something. I'd love for him to go to the Hornets, though. I don't know who the I Hornets can, would give up, but I'd just love to see him go to the Hornets. I can low-key see him going to the Suns on some low-key type beat. Oh, who would you trade? I mean, I guess I'd, I'd, I'd be okay yeah, with Cameron I, Johnson. I, That's what I, I'm saying. Like, all you need to play with Jokic is role players that know their role, and phew, you get a prom Jamal Murray back playing like MJ, Bubble and Jamal Murray. And Crowder can go. I mean, you trade campaign in there if you want to. I mean... DeAndre Aiden, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and MPJ, that's solid. I mess with it. At that I mean, but at that point, I hope you're getting like, you know, not as good MPJ because I'm taking what MPJ was in that one season. Not yeah, what MPJ was last season. What we technically calling it last season or this season? I'm confused. Because uh, uh, I'm calling last season a uh the 2020-21 season, the one where uh everybody was healthy until the end. And they were looking crazy when they got Aaron Gordon. I bl- if they keep that team, if they kept that team intact, they they were a crazy squad. They were crazy. I mean, all they did trade was with R.J. Hampton and a pick. That was a crazy trade when I saw it. I mean, Aaron Gordon be giving buckets to the Pels. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, solid pick. Um, I'm good on the pick. So we have Walker Kessler, uh, drafted by Grizzlies, going to Minnesota. Um, what can I say? He's a really good shot blocker. His coach talked a lot of smack about him, talking a lot of smack to Chet, talking about he doesn't have a man's body and how Walker Kessler, you know, is built. He going to be able to shoot the three, which, I mean, you can hope. I mean, he did shoot like 27% from threes, though. So, I don't know. That could just be him trying to gas him up a little bit. But, you know, I mean, Minnesota don't have to trade for Miles Turner, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you got you got Cat who isn't known for his defense. Uh, you got Denzel Russell who can't defend. Uh, you got a guy who can defend uh, next to Cat. So I mean, but you have Nas Reed though, one of the best backup bigs in the league. He could be starting on any team to be honest with you. He and could, he's a big but man. he's very viable off the bench. I mean, he just is. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, where do you really fit in Walker Kessler with him? Because I I would definitely not run Walker Kessler and Nas Reed because. All my time I'm watching Nas Reed, I don't know if I'm pushing him to the four. Like, I'm definitely not pushing him Walker, and Kessler, Walker Kessler to the four. So I don't know where he really fits, to be honest with you, to, in Minnesota. And let's say try to start him with Cat, but I don't know if he's ready for that. I mean, he can shot block, we know that. Best shot blocker in, uh, in college. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's ready for that big hassle of uh, playing in the starting lineup with Cat. I mean, I think it'll work out. Um, solid pick. They got a guy who can defend next to Cat. I mean, move Cat to power four. There you go. Now you got someone to hold down the paint. So you got two guys to hold on the paint because then whenever Cat comes out or whenever Walker comes out, dude, Walker will be coming out before Cat. Uh, you got Nas Reed who can still hold down the paint. So good pick. Uh, a pick that uh, I questioned a little bit, David Roddy. Uh, going big to body Memphis. Roddy. Big body Roddy going to Memphis. Um, seems to me like the Grizzlies, because uh, they also picked up Kenneth Lawson, so it seems to me like they are going for a bunch of body types that are like fake Zion. Just a bunch of guys. They're trying to go for that Zach uh, right. They're trying to go for mm-hmm. Like, they understand they got to play Zion a lot. So they're like, you know what, let's go get some guys who, can, who are just as big as him, who can just... They bang with him down low. Yeah, just, just bang with him. And I mean, honestly, I'll... Just being the La Tech guy, I would have taken Kenny Lawson over Dave Roddy because Kenny Lawson was putting David Roddy, he was giving Dave Roddy that work in the NIT tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now they're on the same team, funny enough. Uh, so, I mean, I guess you get them, you get them both anyway. And, I mean, Kenny Lawson probably was never going to get drafted. 
uh, David Roddy was. So, I mean, you got yeah, getting the shot with Zach Randolph. Let Zach Randolph and Kenan Lofton get in the, uh, you know, get in the gym. Hey, Grit and Grind is coming back. Grit and Grind is coming back. Come back. I mean, not better than the Pels, but you know, yeah, Memphis is doing good. But I mean, it's Memphis. Memphis is going to do some weird shit. Uh, it's all going to pan out for him. I thought picking Zaire Williamson, we thought picking like trading up, like like why like trading with us? I'm like, we got Valanciunas and we got Trey Murphy. What are you doing? Like what? Did, what did you like? Why would you do that? They end up getting Zaire Williamson, which started off. I thought he was going to be he was garbage. He wasn't that good, but then like later, I'm like, I see the potential. I I see the I see the wave. I I, I I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna buy some stock in him. I get a rookie card. I see what they were. I see what they were seeing. Uh, I mean, I mean, I ain't got much to say. Margin bow champ going to the. Bucks. I didn't see him going as high to be honest with you with the Bucks. I thought they were going to get like someone else to be honest with you. I don't know who, but I just didn't see Margin uh, bow champ going. He's a good player, good athletic player. Tyson Daniels teammate, shout out. So mm-hmm. I don't have much to say about him either. Uh, off ball guy. I mean, I mean, that's what you want. <laughs> you got Giannis. You you don't need anybody else to be on ball. Uh, he's a defender. I mean, you'll have Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis, and him. I mean, talk about defense. Jesus Christ. Um, solid pick. I'm good on it. Yeah. And uh, what we have next? Blake Wesley. Another 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 two guard um, for the Spurs. A lot of um, them. Yeah, I know. Spurs are crazy with drafting these guards. I don't, I don't know why to be honest with you because you ain't got a room for all of them. You know, he seems he seems very. From what I've read on Blake, he seems very raw as a player. Like he has a lot of. It seems like they're banking on his hot creating. Yeah, I'm looking at some stuff about him right now, but. I I really he's probably a guy who's who's going to G League or probably going to get cut. If I'm being honest, uh, I don't mean to say it like that because I want everybody in this draft to succeed to an extent. But I I I don't really understand it. Quite honestly, who's the Spurs center? I can't remember his name. Yakapoto. Yeah, I mean maybe I go get another center. If I'm being honest, I mean, Yakapoto's solid. He just doesn't fit the timeline as well. Yeah, like I. You can get some good pieces for Yak Perk. Yak Perk can go to a team that's trying to win now, and you can get some nice assets. So I mean, send I, him to the send him to the Raptors and get back like um, what's his face? Um, oh my gosh, play for plays for Toronto. Well, no, play for the Heat. Oh my gosh, six eight. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Justice Winslow? No, played for the he Heat. An OV? No, he played for the Heat, the center. Played for the Heat, and then went, they uh, traded him in that deal to uh, to get um to get uh the guard. Oh my God, I see, I forgot his name too. Damn. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna look I'm, it up. Precious Achua, Precious Achua. I they okay, Precious Achua. Okay. You trade for Precious Achua, I think you could do some good with him. I don't know if the if the Raptors want to do it. They, yeah, I don't know if the Raptors want to do it, but. They, they, are, they might have a center. They might believe him. But you can't go wrong with getting a bunch of centers, especially if you're the Raptors. Um, See which one pans out. With Wendell Moore Jr. Um, good good pick for uh, Minnesota. Good pick for Minnesota. Um, I think it's like everything, like do everything type player. I think he's kind of athletic, too, a little bit. Let me read. Athletic, athletic passer. Yeah. Um, Early bloomer. This is a wing. This is a very like wing league. It's it's pretty interesting though that like at this point, There's so many wings in this draft. So class. many wings, and none of them have a position. Like you can play any of these guys from like position two to four. Like it's insane. Uh, just, Next just year, direct. and it will be the year of positionless basketball in uh, 2023 2004 season because you might have Chet and Victor Winayama on the same team, and then I don't know what do you do it then. Where the guy? <laughs> I don't know what you gonna do if that's the case. The Focus Chef come off the bench. How you have Focus Chef coming at uh, on the three? Uh, and then they gonna trade for Bobo. You trade you trade for Bobo and then get uh what is this? What's his face? Uh my uh Miles Brown, whatever. The, the seven seven dude. Ooh. Just go ahead and bring Taco Fall in while you at it, man. 
run a run a big ball lineup like you just everybody just, seven feet tall. You stop the offense by just getting in like a, a circle, and then they just can't even see each other anymore. That's what you do. That's what they do. But, okay. Yeah, I'm but honestly, yeah, I like to pick. He pick that's for the memes. That's why I don't. I don't. I don't get it, but I like it. Uh, they're gonna give him the two percent oh. body fat, and he's gonna be looking chiseled, and he's gonna be Giannis Antetokounmpo. That's my hot take. He's going to be Nicole Jokic, just yeah. Not, not be, so, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely cool with that. I also don't understand it, but I guess you want another power forward to play with Bam or have moved Bam to the four and then have him play center. I mean, whatever. Um, mm, it is what it is. I'm cool with that. The Warriors, Patrick Ball Jr., that one confused me. Just a That's little a bit. high upside one. If he Very can, high he upside. Yeah. But if he can out as a six nine shooter, I'd play him at the center to be honest with you. I don't know if he ever did it before in his tenure at playing in Milwaukee with his dad, but uh I'd play him at the center. I would play him at the center. Honestly, the Warriors are really good at developing. Like they're probably one of the best teams in the league really at developing. Though. I mean, if there's any team that a guy as raw or a guy with as much upside as Patrick Baldwin should go, it will be the Warriors. And I mean, yeah. you just Hate to see it if you're the rest of the league because they just won a damn championship and now they potentially have a guy who could be an all star. Yeah, let's, I hope I hope he pans out, but also don't hope he pans out because if you give them that and then you give them Wiseman if he comes back and becomes something, just another number of versatility, to be honest with you. But I let, I think we got one of the biggest drops I've seen. We got Ty Ty dropping all the way to 29 and getting traded to the Houston Rockets. Just KPJ, did my man ties out thirty. KPJ replacement should have went probably the went better replacement. Low key, top twenty at least. Uh, to be honest with you, hold up. What's the other player on Houston or on Houston on our, on the Rockets? A guard. Yeah, there's that one that they drafted uh, last season. Oh my gosh, I can't spell where it is roster. You got Jalen Green. Yeah, you can you can continue. I'm just trying to see. I, I'd rather him start to be on. Josh Christopher right there. He was good when he played. From what I remember, Josh Christopher. And he has chemistry with Jalen Green because they played. He just he just I think they gotta trade KPJ. And they gotta they just gotta I don't K- he KPJ just, kind of kind of low I mean he's young too, but he low key was having beef with the coach. Like when yeah, playing, he's, it was I mean, he he is where he is. Send him to the Kings. That's what I say. Whatever. You just want his career uh, to die like that? Okay. Oh, uh, man. I love KBJ, man. I, I want him on my pills, but we're at this point, we don't need him anymore. I know the Kings, he would be maybe really good, too, off like uh, off of uh, De'Aaron, maybe. I don't know if he, he should definitely start over um whoever they got right now because they traded for him. The dude off the Bucks, but he's, he's a weird player too. I mean, he's uh Ty Ty Washington though definitely should have went higher. Definitely. I really I don't understand why he didn't go higher. I'm very pleased with it. Um the Peyton Watson pick, that's a pretty decent pick too. Uh at this point, you know, you pick 30, you're you're just trying to get some good value out of guys. Um he he doesn't really have an offensive game, though, from what I've seen, like at all. Which is Peyton Watson. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think he's like yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it's pick thirty. If you're the you can't Denver, really go wrong with or, that. Like, if you're Denver, I mean, co- Six, eight, first come the worst. You have a guy who can you can throw in there and play some defense. I mean, sure. I don't think we have to go through all these second round picks. Um, any oh, big ones that we want to talk about, you know, two uh, Jalen Williams, say Lakers Jay make a Hardy, plus move. Kennedy Chandler, EJ Liddell. Um, those are the guys that, that I definitely want to talk about. Everybody yeah. else, do without Max Christie, of course, just because the Lakers suck. And I don't stupid. know. Um, I wouldn't have gotten him. See, see, right, see this guy right under him, right there. Not that one, but right under there. Yeah, that's the guy I would, you know, snatched up. And I, that's the guy. If if I'm the Kings, I would have took too. He's such a high upset. He was the second best prospect in the draft before we start. Before the uh, before the season started, he was the best prospect, like the second best prospect in his draft class. 
and he has one like mediocre. It wasn't even a bad. I don't see. I, to, let me look at it because I really don't understand why he like got slipped this far. I think it was his efficiency, but what I saw in the G League, he was like one, the best player, if not one of the best. Like, what do you what do you get? Nineteen point eight points, four point four rebounds, three point five assists. Yeah, hey, it's twenty points, man. I mean, thirty-eight percent from the, that's the reason why. It's his efficiency. It's his efficiency. But when you're you got a six four six nine wingspan, that's crazy. He improved his frame. Really good at pick and roll. It's just his efficiency, which is always a problem with young guards. I mean, Killian Hayes was just drafted in the lottery. Like, what? <laughs> this guy is better than Killian Hayes. He is. And I mean, it also makes me wonder, what the hell are the Kings playing? Because it seems like every damn year they just want to draft nothing but guards. Like, I don't quite understand. If I look at their roster. They, I, I understand why they uh, – I, I feel like they should have kept them, though. That's one I would have kept instead of trading them to Dallas. I just don't – So you have Dante DiVincenzo, De'Aaron Fox, um, Josh Jackson, Jeremy Lamb, uh, Davian Mitchell – and now you have Jaden Hardy. Um, has- no, Jaden Hardy got traded to Dallas. Okay. I was about to say. Yeah. It's like he's with the Kings. I don't know why. I would have kept him, though, because he's the best one out of all those besides the air. Aim has a up- higher upside. That, now that, see, now he's talking, see, ignore everything I just fucking said. He got traded to Dallas. I mean, goddamn. Now that's, that was that's good on that. The Kings are once again losers, and they're also stupid. So. <laughs> I mean, Kings if, you, King. if if you add a potential twenty point per game score next to Luca, I mean, all Luca needs is just a little bit of damn help. That's all he needs, and you got a guy who can give you sweet. I can't wait to see this summer league. This summer league is gonna go crazy. Okay, he's gonna win. My friend said, but it's it's crazy. It's going it's gonna be fun. Um, yeah. uh, we. I'm I'm a fan. Uh, yeah. Uh, all the Jadens in this draft, I'm a fan. <laughs> a lot of Jadens. Uh, Kenny Chandler, though, uh, he's someone I want to highlight too. Um, my roommate is a Memphis fan. Like I said before, he's also a Tennessee fan. So I have seen a lot of Kenny Chandler in this household because of my roommate. Uh, Kenny Chandler, at one point, if I'm not mistaken, was what projected to go top five. I don't know what the hell happened. And why um, second round? Seven point seven points, not the greatest. Three point four assists and one point four steals. That's pretty good. Uh, Nineteen point eight minutes per game. And see, uh, I, this this was him playing in uh, the World Cup, though. So, I mean, I wouldn't have guessed that because if you watch the Tennessee games, Kenny Chandler walks with this attitude as if he is the best player on the court. And I ain't gonna lie, like a lot of games I've seen, he was just really subpar. And even my roommate was looking at it like, yeah, you know, he usually doesn't play like this. Like, he's supposed to be better. So it just seems to me like he's just one of those really hyped guys coming out of high school who went into mm-hmm. college and just shit the bed. Kind of like um, um the dude in uh, Atlanta. I'm going to stop trying to name players because I just can't. I literally just can't. Sharif Cooper. Sharif Cooper. It is. <laughs> I'm so thrown off. I, I'm just forgetting every player's name. But, yeah. He's kind of like reminds me of Sharif Cooper a little bit. I mean, I can it's like, definitely it's like see a that. draft and put in the G League. I don't. Yeah. I definitely see that. I mean, it's an interesting pick. Uh, it's Memphis. Memphis, once again, they're going to do the interesting thing. They got a, a Tennessee guy, so Tennessee gets to stay in Tennessee. Um, uh, yeah. He'll be interesting. I think he has decent upside if he just gets his mind right, but uh, I mean, whatever. Uh, but I think. We all got to the point to where we wanted to really hear in the second round, and that's the Pelicans absolutely dropping their nuts on the entire league's forehead. It's like, hey, guys, guess what? We're going to draft dunk, the dunk best. <laughs> We're going to draft the guy who has the absolute best value in this entire draft, and a guy who was who should have went top twenty. We're going to draft him with pick forty-one, and y'all can't do shit about it. So, EJ Liddell, love this guy. Uh, I think he's better than Malachi Branham, his teammate. Shout out. Um, the dude made strides as a three-point shooter and a shot blocker. 
You remember me saying in the in the in the first podcast I did, which is the the two things I really wanted was a rim protector and a playmaker. And we got a playmaker and some defense in Dyson Daniels, and then we go and get a shot blocking wing who can also play make and shoot in the second round. Hey, he reminds me so much of Bo Cruz and Hustle Man is ridiculous. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start calling him Bo Cruz because he's Hey, if he can be a Bo Cruz, I ain't hey, gonna lie. We're winning the chip five years hey, ago. It's gonna be different. It's gonna be different. We get Bo's Cruz. The Cruz missile. Man, I'm I'm <laughs> extremely happy with EJ Liddell. I was really looking at Kofi Coburn at this pick though. Uh or Kenneth Lofton. But EJ Liddell, looking at him and looking at his film and his stats and all that, what he also what he averaged? Average 19. Oh, let me go back to the page. 19 oh, and, yeah. and 8. I'm going to round up for my boy. I know it says 19.4. I'm going to round up because it sounds good. 20.8 rebounds and 2.6 blocks over 33 minutes per game. And yeah, I don't see how it wasn't in the top. I don't see how it wasn't, like, at least in the 20s. I feel like they did. Nah, man. Like, it's it's crazy how they let him slip down so fast. He reminds me, people say it reminds people of, like, a a Draymond type player like Draymond with like you know a perimeter game. Oh, he's he's better than that, and he's 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 explosive too. He's very athletic. He's good size, six seven, two forty three with six eleven wingspan. I mean, I hope we can get like a Grant Williams. That'll be fire. And he can create his own shot. I mean, this guy. I really hope the Pelicans free up a roster spot for him, meaning trading either Kyra, DG, and. I, I think we need to move Garrett Temple. Garrett Temple needs to just – I don't want him to be Udonis Haslam. I don't want him wasting a roster spot like that. Go ahead and just – Really, though. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. And so you get the same – you can get the same contract and then you just don't take up a roster spot. And you'll still be right there doing every single game. And then you know what? You can always play with the G League if you want to, if you still want to play. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a possibility. Be like, um, see, look, I, I'm doing it too. I can't remember people's names. Gerald Green. No, the guy who was like 39, he was with the Lakers G League team. Oh, the uh, uh, Ingram dude, Andre Ingram? Yeah. See, look, I can't remember if he was named either. Uh, you go ahead and be him. I mean, he's damn near the same age. So, For real. I, think I, I really want EJ Liddell to be a Herb Jones. I want him, or oh, Jose Alvarado, a guy who no one's expected to do shit. Comes in and is one of the best people on the team. That's just one thing. I expect him to be good, though, because, like, he should have been a top 20 pick. There's so many teams that could have utilized this guy right here. You know, I'm looking at it, and I don't understand. Like, I mean, you're averaging 20 in in college. I'm already going to look at you. Then you got eight rebounds, so you tell me that you can rebound. He averaged more rebounds than Mark Williams. Let's think about that. Yeah, Um, the Pels didn't want. I didn't expect him to still be on the board at this time. No, they didn't, and I'm glad that he was. And also, 2.6 blocks. I mean, we're putting up Mark Williams numbers here at six seven. Mm-hmm. Like, and you're playing at Ohio, uh, Ohio State, so you're you're going to play some some good competition. I mean, definitely. So uh, he can shoot, he can play make, he can create his own shot, he can shot block, play defense. I I he he seems pretty efficient. He can do a lot of damage in the post. I mean, I, I, I really don't see why this guy went forty-one. But God damn it, I'm glad he did because I sure the heck is too. He he he's gonna be somebody. He he's gonna be special. Really um, I'm I'm happy with that. That's my um, that's that's the that's the sleeper pick right there. That's that's I don't I don't know that's so that's a pick like how how did you let him go that far down? Also, I, I guess I'm wrong. I guess the Knicks did draft Trevor Keels. I, I thought he was undrafted though. Like I thought they just picked him. I don't even know. Like they get a guard, but like what's the point? <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> <laughs> you get a guard in the second round. Congratulations, you could have had Jay Nivey as your guard, and the Knicks up. Knicks Knicks Lakers and. He came just the biggest loser in the draft, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I was I wasn't honestly going to put the Pels in the winners category yet. Definitely, but, but then when they drafted EJ, 
we're winners. I have to throw them in. Yeah, if I have a winners category, I got the Detroit Pistons. I have the New Orleans Pelicans. I ooh, I'm trying to think. I have OKC Thunder, and I have also I have the Rockets, and you know the Magic because you know they got the top picks in the mm-hmm. draft. Um, if I have losers, obviously the the New York Knickerbockers, like they're they're they need a. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. They got the same amount of picks as Brooklyn did this year. It's crazy. So we got the New York Knicks going crazy. I don't I don't know what they were doing there. Uh, okay, any other team? I can't really think really off the top the of my Kings, head. Who else? The Kings, the, the Kings, yeah, the Kings. Yeah, I don't know. If the I'm Lakers are losing. More. The Lakers the, traded up for a guy who they probably could have gotten. Undrafted. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like they could have got him undrafted. I, unless I feel like I'm not underrating this dude. I don't. I feel like I'm probably ready because he's he has a good shot. The mechanic, it looks, it's a beautiful shot, but he just didn't shoot that well and efficient. And that usually turns off a lot of scouts where you could easily just pick him up in unrestricted free agency. I mean, you got Sharif, which I mean, okay, he's not all that. You got Scotty Pippen Jr., who I think is pretty good. So I mean, like, yeah, that. I mean, that's cool. I mean, we know Lakers can't develop for crap. Yeah, so. and they're going. He's going to be. They're probably gonna be the best players in the league in three years. Oh yeah, maybe. definitely. It's um, gonna be like Brandon Ingram. He's gonna well, be we Kyle completely Kuzma. forgot Carlo Matkovic. I think that's how you say it. Uh, uh, yeah, I was looking at this thing while you were talking about um uh, EJ. Um, he he got hops. He got hops. That's all I can really say. Uh, uh, if I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna overreact, I'm gonna say he's a Croatian Blake Griffin. Um, I saw that comparison, super, man. Super overreaction, but yeah, honestly, he's probably gonna be a DD. He's gonna be a guy who's gonna be overseas for the next two years, and I'm honestly probably gonna forget about. If him. he could have that one football. highlight like DD did, where he clamped up Luca, I'll be happy if that's all his career comes to in the league. Because no, DD clamped you know up Luca for that like five minute stretch or whatever it was. If if he gives me a Terrence Jones game against LeBron, um, he's gonna go down as a Pelicans legend. <laughs> like, yeah, I just. Oof. Oh my gosh! I I feel like he he's athletic. I mean, I see the tools. Hey, he's uber athletic. You see the dunks he be throwing down. Um, maybe that's our Jackson Haynes two I don't know. He's more of a wing player than Jackson Haynes. Nah, uh, he he's a he's a vibes guy to me. He's yeah. gonna like I said, he's gonna be overseas two years. So I ain't gonna say much about him because I'm gonna forget about him uh, for the next yeah. year. Sorry, we're showing a lot, you know, the Pelicans buys by talking about this unknown second round pick. But he's not wrong. I'll talk about Kendall Brown because he felt really low. He felt really low. Uber athletic. He went to Baylor to be the number one option. And ended up going all the way down to 48 because, you Jeremy know. Jeremy Sohan was drafted before him. That's literally, I'd be disgusted if I literally <laughs> went there to be number one option and Jeremy Sohan get picks. And that because he's. Not because he's bad, because but like you literally went there to be the number one option, and then other players just surpassed you, and then you just got just fell away in the draft. I thought he was going. He was like ranked like one of the top players in the draft. Like he's uber athletic and everything. But we got Isaiah Mobley. Um, I mean that's cool. Cavaliers, you know, obviously why they Is drafted. That, um, old dude's brother, my tripping. Yeah, his older brother too. Yeah. That's well. That's wild. <laughs> that's wild. Uh, that was also for the vibes. That's a vibe pick. Uh, yeah, damn, he's, he's also good. Um, yeah. Pause. Uh, so, I no, mean, uh, that's about that's about all I got for the draft. Uh, yeah, for I do want to mention Kofi Coburn. Uh, I forgot who picked him up. I think I want to say the Spurs. Don't quote me on that. Uh. Or maybe Utah got him? Yes. Okay, yeah. So the Jazz actually got two guys who I really like. I've fallen in love with Johnny Juzang when I watched him, what was that, two years ago uh, in the final in the finals for March Madness? I, I, I watched that uh, Johnny Juzang for UCLA. I watched right. that UCLA team, that entire uh, tournament, and Johnny Juzang was giving bucket after bucket after bucket. He was really giving me Kobe Bryant vibes with just how he was acting. Like, they'll be down. He has a big shot. Like, I loved it. I was like, this dude can play in the clutch. This dude is a hooper. This dude is a baller. And he went to Utah. <laughs> and, well, you know what? We're, we're not even going to talk about that because I hate Utah. Um, 
Give the name back. I'm on that that train. Uh, Kofi sure. Coburn. I thought he was going to get drafted first round. I think he should have. He was a 20 and 10 guy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't understand how he didn't. He was like really dominant as the center, like playing all, especially all offensively. And look at this guy. He's an absolute unit. Put him on side of Zion, please. I mean, we're going to have – we already got the strongest front court in the league by far, but Jesus Christ, add him too. Why not? He could be – I thought we were going to draft him because he could be a Willie replacement. Um, I mean, Definitely. he can defend. He's the rim protector that we needed, and he has an offensive game in the post. So I – Really wanted Kofi Coburn. I really wish we would have drafted a center in this draft class because there's some really good ones. Um, Abo Adaji, he's he's raw, but I think he's like whichever team finish. I don't know, man. It might be running out of time. I, I hope my man gets signed this year. He, I see the man. It's like the fifth time I said it, but I see the vision. <laughs> I, I do see the vision. I also see the vision with Kenneth Lofton. Kenneth Lofton. Uh, I know a I lot of people do. That that listen to this probably don't know who the fuck that is, but um, I, I hope to, they do. I go to school I, with the dude. Um, solid, just he he. People are gonna say, oh, you know, he's big, he's he's undersized, but he's you know, he's big, and he lost weight. And even when he did have the weight, his footwork is a lot quicker than you think it is, and he's a very slick, athletic dude. Yeah. Kind of like Daniels, a lot. He's a lot more athletic than he looks, and a lot more athletic than people give him credit for. Um, it was like three something, and then whatever he is now, he's like two two fifty. He's not bad. Yeah, no, like the only thing that maybe it's a little. Maybe I, I think it's really just probably a body fat percentage. I mean, he probably has a little over body fat percentage. You get that I, down I height, he's six seven. Like yeah, that's wing. That's all these wings in this draft are like six seven. And if he if he was seven foot one at all, even out, it'll look the same, and no one yeah, be saying if, anything. If he was six ten, doing what he does, oh, he'd be I, in the lottery. He'd be in the lottery, but he was yeah, six literally. seven. And he plays a latte. <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna be honest. He plays a latte. Uh, I mean, hey, we had Carl Malone, uh, Paul Millsap, Kim McCulkey, Teresa Weatherspoon. Shout out to Coach T Spoon for the Pell. Yeah. I take legend. Um, so it's a little history for for some people out there. Paul Millsap, you know, hey, go. No, I mess with Paul Millsap. Do some players. So I think Ken Lawson can can be added yeah. to that. Mm-hmm. Ken Lawson's, you yeah. know. Ken Lofton, kind of do remind me a little bit, Paul Mills, a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Good player, man. I, I, I really, I'm really gonna root for him. I really hate the fact he's on the damn team. Um, God, I hate I, that, but yeah, I rather him. I rather the Grizzlies than Utah. I mean, I it's it's making it really hard to root for the Grizzlies now, man. Also, they're like the conference rivals, but also they're really annoying on Twitter. Like, <laughs> really annoying, like. You mention anything about them, and then they're all coming at your neck, talking like, 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 John Moran speaking in italics, like, dog, like, it's, it's, it's getting crazy. That's me. a lot for a team that ain't win shit. I mean, obviously, though, they're talking, crazy. they talk so much trash about the Warriors and stuff like that. But what has John Moran done in this career besides one or MIP and rookie of the year that he didn't deserve? If Zion wouldn't play that full season, he wouldn't even got it. Uh, I honestly don't even think he should have got MIP because to me, MIP. Yeah. Not the mean, most of oh, you don't give it to a top who, pick. If you win rookie of the year, you shouldn't be winning MIP the next year because, like you said, he's a top pick and he won rookie of the year. So we know that he has superstar trajectory. And so when he has a superstar season, we shouldn't be fucking surprised by this. Okay. So I, I think there's a lot more people. And that reason, I think Lucas Jordan Poole should have got it. Jordan Poole is in my MIP in my opinion. Oh, I mean, definitely was Jordan Poole is my MIP. I already got him or Darius. I, I, I'm more like Darius Garland than the Jock. At least Darius Garland wasn't nearly as good. He was like one of the worst players in the league, statistically wise. Um, I still rather no lottery pick to get MIP the next year. Maybe later lottery, but not a top two it's pick. Like thirteen, maybe, but like, yeah. Because if Zion would have came there, like Zion would have started off slow, and then the next year average like twenty eight, like seventy percent from the field, and went MIP. That's so weird. Because like, I don't know. It's like the Devonte Graham, Brandon Ingram situation. But I like, you know, that was a lot closer than what it was like. Because those two actually both had like lower stats, but Devonte Graham was like really, really low. Like he only averaged like a, what, a point, like five points, and it went up to like almost like eighteen. And I mean, MIP Devontae Graham was different. It wasn't like his 
third year when he did that. His fourth year, like he, like he, people were expecting that from him, but like year two, yeah, and it didn't happen. So Lakers I mean, fans, they just got they tripping. Development yeah. is not a thing with them. That's all I got. That's all. I, that's all I want to talk about. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's pretty much it. We talk about the draft. We're definitely going to have a Pelicans thumbnail because I did already pay for the thumbnail. And we talked a good bit about the Pelicans, so, you know. Um, it, was like a, it was a long stream. Y'all have multiple streams, a three-hour long stream. This one was, what, about an hour and a half, two hours? And this one's pretty much uh, one – it's pretty much an hour, a two-hour long stream. So, y'all got that. Y'all got two streams. Um, and I'm still not getting monetized for it either. So, <laughs> so that's crazy. Yeah, so I guess I guess that's it. A really good draft. A lot of you know, a lot of top, a lot of potential in each draft class. Like, yeah, I like it. I mess, I mess. This, with this was draft definitely class. a lot more interesting to watch than last year's one. Right, definitely, so. a lot. Even even with the whack trades, they were still trades. You know, better than not having them at all. But next next time off season, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, um, free agency starts uh, on June thirtieth. So. That's when free agency starts, so we'll probably Zion make a video. Zion extension. Go see it. Zion. Oh, Max. yeah. They did say he's going to get one as soon as free agency. They probably already have it down. Um, They have that. Yeah. I, I'm going to be ready to see that. It's, it's, it's going to get hectic. We're probably going to see a lot of more stuff happen before, it, though, like a bunch of woes leaks and stuff maybe. But Andre, right I'm, now. I'm 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 right. I'm going to leak it. I'm, I'm on that train. Go ahead. I'm going to start it. DeAndre Aiden to the Pels. Give it to me. Make a dream. I trade Vucevic. Let me keep Daniels, too. Hey, that's like one of the best defenses in the league, man. All right. We're going to run out a unit with no shooting. Have it be like, we're going to have DeAndre Aiden. We're going to have Herb. We're going to have Trey. We're going to, well, we have shooting with Trey. But Dyson Daniels, and who, who are we going to put in? Jose. Like, just throw them. Jose, just put everything in there. Just yeah. lock everybody Just lock everybody up. They can't even do it. Five stars of defense. Like, we're just going to lock you up. We're, you're not scoring. We're not going to score, and you ain't going to score either. So. For real, though. Yeah, but I can't wait. I can't wait till free agency. I can't wait till summer league, to be honest with you. Forget preseason. I, I, summer league. I wonder who's going to play. I know Zion. I don't know. going to be cold, too. That was cold that, that summer league year. I had high hopes for my boy, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. R.I.P. My boy, Nikhil. His career is going to die in Utah. Really, though. It's it's a sad situation. I really hope they trade Donovan Mitchell just so he can get more PT. He's good for your... He's good for your 30-point game, and then his next game is going to be like three points. But you know what? I love him. (laughs) I love him. He always got a spot. He always come back. Hopefully you try don't extend him and he just becomes a restricted free agent. Okay, got him again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm cool with that. He kind of fits. I mean, he can be a good score, score off the bench. I mean. There for vibes, man. We're going to have a bench that's going to look like the 2018 Nets. Like, that's going to yeah. be by. That's we'll the vibe. We're going to have a bunch of highlight mixes just the bench. That's, that's the vibe team. You got Garrett Tipple who could be Jared Deli's old ass. We got the vibes. You gonna be you gonna be trying to go up against Ben Simmons like Jared Dudley did that season? That oh, was crazy. I, give it to me. I I want all that smoke. You're gonna be Garrett Temple versus Jason Tatum. I can see it right now. Him <laughs> versus Devin Booker. That's what's gonna be. Really though, it's gonna be him and Jay Jay Crowder still gonna be on the sun. So so they shopping Jay Crowder. I hope he man he, he better not come near the Pelicans though. Ain't nobody want Jay Crowder. Uh, well, I feel. Close, hey, close uh, this bug out, man. All right, man. Yeah, this was. Start hey. going on for another two hours. Dude. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna get in all that next episode. For real though, man. This, this is already a long one. Total hours, man. This was, it was like six hours plus the last stream, in this stream, crazy y'all. Draft time, free agency. Uh, we gonna be on it. Uh, any breaking news, Woj bombs or something like that, but like a big trade. We're going to be on it. But this is In the Loops with the Hoops, uh, y'all. Uh, me and Calvin. I hope y'all enjoy. Um, we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.